I want to highlight uh, some of the reasoning uh, or inference that is going on in IBM Watson. So let's start out with uh, these two sentences over here. This is uh, the clue given in May 1898, Portugal celebrated the 400th anniversary of this explorer's arrival in India. And here is a random sentence you might find somewhere, I don't know where, maybe in a newspaper. In May, Gary arrived in India after he celebrated his anniversary in Portugal. So on the surface, um, there are a lot of similarities, right? Uh, so uh, there's arrival and arrived in, uh, they're celebrated and celebrated, we're talking about May, uh, we're talking about anniversaries, we're talking about Portugal, uh, we're talking about India, uh, and perhaps Gary is even an explorer, right? So if we just use keyword matching, this is a pretty good match, but, you know, as you might guess, not really what we're after. Um, so, so what they're doing is they're using, uh, in essence, uh, well, in addition to other forms of inference, three kinds of reasonal temporal, geospatial, and statistical paraphrasing. So um, let's see, so temporal, uh, we already talked about that a little bit. Uh, they do some math uh, on, the, on the 400th anniversary, and so I realized that we have to go back in time. And so suddenly we're at 1498, which matches up with this one, and we're matching May with May. So that's temporal reasoning. You know, not brain surgery, but still uh, needs to be done, and they got it done. Um, Geospatial reasoning, um, if you have a database uh, of entries, uh, even Wikipedia has that. If you look up Terre Haute, you'll find that it's in Vigo County, which is a state in Indiana, which is a, uh, sorry, a county in Indiana, which is a state in the United States of America, which is part of North America, which is on what we call Western Hemisphere. So um, you can do some geospatial reasoning. You might realize that, oh yeah, Kepat Beach is in India. So strengthening these uh, relationships. Um, Statistical paraphrasing, um, what's the similarity between arrival and landed in? Um, there is some similarity uh, in those two things. I mean, if you land somewhere by boat or airplane or space capsule, you kind of arrive there, right? So that's what we want to do with these, uh, with, with reasoning, just to create stronger evidence. Um, so, and we wouldn't have this evidence with, with a Gary sentence. So where do we use all this stuff? Uh, so spatial reasoning, um, containment, African country, um, relative direction to the east, bordering, relative location near, numeric property, area, population, height. And so they use that, uh, uh, they also use temporal reasoning, lifespan, durational, and they do that as part of evidence scoring. So that's where we use this thing. We'll talk a little bit about type coercion here in a moment. So, the, um, as I mentioned to you before, lexical, lexical answer type, LAT, was really crucial. So, suppose we have all these answers that we came up with that are related to, that are potential answers for this clue. In 1610, Galileo named the moons of this planet for the Medici brothers. So, what, what, what are they talking about? What's a planet, right? Is, is it an instrument, a book, a moon? Um, so it's very important to, to realize, ah, we're looking for a planet. Um, so here is what they call the type coercion framework. So you have different types, and so like trying to figure out how well do they match. And so suppose we have a candidate answer for something, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, and we have JFK and we have facility. And so, so trying to figure out um, do they match. So, as it turns out, there's John F. Kennedy International Airport, and so the, they figure out um, that, so they match this one here to the airport, and this, the airport, uh, or international airport, is a, is a direct match for airport. And so facility, you know, facility, an airport could be a facility, and so what they have over here is, if you have an ontology um, about locations, you might realize that, oh yes, one of the facility types is an airport, so it's an is a relationship. So do some math, and uh, we get a match of um, of the type coercion framework. Watson, IBM Watson is all about confidence values, confidence factors. Um, so like trying to figure out 
you know, how good is the information? That was a key aspect of Watson, and so we they have numbers everywhere. Um, entity disambiguation again, Typecore helps with that. So talk about JFK. Um, flights took off from JFK, so over here we want to realize that oh, uh, when it comes to named entity recognition, um, that would be an airport. Uh, JFK was assassinated. That would be a person. Uh, critics loved JFK, that would be a movie, right? So notice that it's the same thing. Named entity recognition is a little bit more challenging than we have seen it so far. Um, so what is it? Um, just a little bit more detail about temporal, temporal normalization. So if we have a fourth, 400th anniversary, uh, we saw like do the math to get to something like this. So that's temporal normalization. Um, Let's see what else. Here's the temporal reasoning that we then do, uh, where we um, realize that 27 is a correct instantiation of uh, xx. Um, here's some additional temporal reasoning. Um, so here's the question or the clue. At the museum, you can see the spinal column of this 19th century presidential assassin. And so suppose we have uh, two candidates, George Wallace and John Wilkes Booth. So then um, we kind of like need to know that um, that there's a 19th century presidential assassin, right? So somebody must have lived in the 19th century. So if we look at George Wallace and we find out that, oh, wait a minute, they were born uh, in 1930. Well, clearly they didn't exist in the 19th century. Okay. Here's statistical paraphrasing, murderer, assassin, same thing. So here we have somebody was born in 1838, so yes, that matches up with the, with the 19th century. So um, some additional constraint, uh, sorry, temporal, temporal, temporal reasoning. Spatial reasoning, uh, again, they have uh, lots of information uh, stored in structured knowledge bases. Uh, the clue is India shares its longest border with this nation to the west. And so we have some candidates, Iran, Pakistan, Bangladesh, that came up as part of uh, uh, searching. And so now uh, we want to find out that there are countries called India and Pakistan. And uh, in, uh, I'm sorry, Pakistan has a border with Iran. Um, Pakistan has a border with India. India has a border with Bangladesh. And so we have uh, geo-coordinates. And then we can use these things to determine whether something is to the west or to the east. And so um, I think the answer actually is Iran, but I'm not 100% sure. So some reasoning, uh, not rocket science, not you know like figuring things out like you know if Lisa is taller than than Brian and Brian is taller than uh, Amber. I mean uh, you know who is is Lisa taller than Amber? Um, no, we cannot do that. Um, but still, this is inference. This is reasoning, and it's very very valuable to what they were doing. Alrighty, folks, that's it uh, about Watson. I'll talk to you later. Bye.